Hey, today's video, we're gonna talk about Azure Synapse Analytics. Now, what exactly comprises Azure Synapse? What is that? Well, that is a collection of things. It's one-stop shopping for your big data analytics needs and reporting and ETL all in one. So one place for an MPP, Massively Parallel Processing SQL Engine, as well as a serverless uh, compute that Microsoft makes available to you so that you can query flat files like CSVs or Parquet files. On top of that, you can develop in a notebook type of experience. You can write Python scripts, uh, Scala, uh, C Sharp, as well as SQL scripts against uh, your data. Uh, we also have orchestration, so data orchestration, uh, transformation, ETL, extract, transform, and load. And then on top of that, we have Power BI reports. So you have that whole Power BI report development experience all encapsulated within the Synapse workspace. And of course, you got management, security, uh, monitoring of your pipelines and jobs all in one place. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Big shout out to Harry Loughton for encouraging me to make this video after I've been a little bit slow uh, to make a new video. So thanks Harry, link to Harry's awesome YouTube channel below. Here we go. Okay, here are the steps in order to set up a new Azure Synapse workspace. Click the little hamburger menu up here, top left, create a resource. Easiest thing to do to filter all these options that you have is just type in Synapse and you want the Azure Synapse Analytics Workspace Preview. This is still in preview at the time of this recording. Not generally available yet. Uh, the biggest difference on uh, being generally available or GA is just there's no SLA yet uh, associated with it. Resource group, just a logical way of grouping uh, the objects you're about to create. I, you can create a new one or use an existing one. Pick your location, uh, your workspace name, Curvy Synapse. Uh, just checks to see if it's unique, get all these green check boxes, you're good, account name. So this is the Azure Data Lake storage account that's gonna be associated with your Synapse workspace. So you can go browse those files and do query, queries on the files, both with uh, Spark pools and, and SQL pools of, of databases. You can create a new one or use an existing one. Nice thing about this wizard is it will grant the role, storage blob data contributor, that's important, it grants that role to your Synapse workspace so that you can go browse the objects in your data lake. File system name, this is just the container folder name within data lake that's gonna be your primary place where your files are. Uh, you're not limited to just this, this storage account, but this is, will be your primary one. Let's click security, uh, type in password here, click networking for the next one. Um, I highly suggest enabling the managed virtual network. This is the most secure way to set up your Azure Synapse workspace. Why? Because then you can use this uh, virtual VNet, virtual network, to connect to other things, including your data lake, other objects, both on-prem and in the cloud. Tags, completely optional. This is metadata. I like putting department and then Kirby. It's just a name value pair. You can make this up, but later, you can search on your objects in Azure based on these tag values. All right, the clever little wizard here checks everything to make sure everything's good. I get a green, click create. So that's it, That click create, take a few minutes and then you can um, dive into your workspace and get to work. So once your workspace is set up, you're gonna go into it and it's gonna look like this. Here's the overview. We're gonna get to the actual studio in a second, but I wanted to point out the Synapse resources. What is the muscle behind this? Two things. We have SQL pools and by default, a SQL on demand or SQL serverless pool is created. This is something that you can use to do queries against your flat file, uh, semi-structured, structured data in your data lake. So you don't have to have a SQL server waiting around to do this. This is just on demand and it spins up for you when you need to do analysis on data files. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. You can create another SQL pool. And what this is, it's an actual uh, provisioned uh, SQL data warehouse as it used to be called. Uh, this is a provisioned massively parallel processing MPP database for your data by default, even the smallest one. If you 
bring this all the way down to 100, you're going to have 60 data files, 60 nodes that are going to handle your data. So 60 nodes with your data and one uh, control node and compute node. Now, if you scale it way up here, you're going to have um, 60 compute nodes and 60 data nodes and one control node. So you can uh, uh, really scale your workload. But I wanted to point out what this is. You can pause it, but this is dedicated uh, MPP database for your analytics. Um, we're just going to discard the changes there. So SQL pools, we have two types, on demand, or they're now going to be called serverless, and then the actual provisioned uh, database. Then you have Apache Spark pools. You can create them here. Uh, but I'm going to show you what that looks like in the Synapse Studio itself. Um, we're going to click the uh, Synapse Studio by just clicking this button right here. I'll let that spin up. And this is what that looks like. What I'd like to point out in the beginning here is uh, this is your home page. You can get back to this page at any point by hitting the home. Um, click on the top right, you've got this little megaphone. It tells you about certain updates that have happened to the system. So you can kind of keep up with uh, things that have been uh, developed or added or new features. Uh, for example, this Knowledge Center. If we close this, we've got this Knowledge Center, which is a nice place to go uh, to browse, uh, for example, available data samples. So these are data sets at your disposal that you can use in your Synapse workspace. We also have Jupyter style notebooks that you can use um, as well as SQL scripts. So that's the Knowledge Center. I wanted to point that out. Let's just close that. So that's the first of these different tabs here. Next we have our data tab. So what you're going to see here is workspaces and then linked services. Uh, linked resources. So workspaces, these are your databases. This is if we had a created a provisioned uh, SQL database uh, or your Spark pools, etc. That's all going to be here. But your linked ones, remember when we set up the wizard, this is where you would go to get to that uh, data that's in your data um, lake. Okay, so if it wasn't obvious before, workspace is your relational databases. Linked, these are all um, flat file. Uh, uh, sources, for example, from your data lake. So you've really got the best of both worlds. You have your relational data, um, and then you have your semi-structured uh, structured, uh, data in a data lake. So like I pointed out, this is our default uh, storage account that we set up for this. If I click on this folder down here called raw, I'll see the contents of that. And that's great. You know, you could edit that or, or do whatever you wanted to do, but you can actually run queries over it. And you, uh, the CSV, for example, if I right click on it and I say new SQL script and say select top 1000 rows, then it's going to bring up this code here. And uh, this will do a select from that file and see up here where it says connect to, this is our SQL on demand. So it's ready and waiting with a few nodes in the background of SQL serverless, SQL on demand to run a query. If I click the run here, now it's going to run it and determine what's in that file. And here it is uh, down here at the bottom. So it's pretty slick in that you can do analysis on your files and there's no database involved at this point. It's just spun up a SQL serverless in the background. Now that's all well and fine, but what if you wanted to do some a little more advanced work on, on that file? So let's go back to the container here. We got Parquet, we got the CSV file. If I right click on this one and said new notebook, I can actually spin up a window here where it's going to load that into a Spark data frame or a Spark table. So let's do the data frame option. And here it is. Now, I can't run this because there is no uh, Spark pool available. So let me show you how you create a Spark pool. What you're going to do is go down here to the left, this Manage uh, tab here. And here you'll have Apache Spark Pools. There's nothing here, so you can either click, click this button here or click the new here. So let's just call it Kirby's Spark 1. And I'm going to pick a small for ECU uh, vCPU option, number of nodes. You can do auto scale, which is slick. It can start with three nodes, bump up to 10. But I'm going to disable that and just, you know, I just want to 
you know, have the minimum of three nodes at two dollars an hour. So uh, this is going to time out when you're not using it, so you're not paying for it. Uh, so let's go ahead and create that. And it submits that deployment. Okay, so if you click the little bell uh, uh, notification icon up at the top, we can see that the deployment was successful. So now let's go back over to that script that we were about to run. Here it is. Uh, once again, we're reading from the CSV file and we can now pick the Spark pool and we'll run it. And what this is going to do is it's going to take the contents of that file and put it in a data frame. Once again, just a review, we right clicked on that CSV file and then we uh, picked the option to create a Spark data frame. Now, since these nodes haven't been used recently, you see down at the bottom that it says uh, starting. So we'll just give that a little bit to spin up those uh, Spark nodes. Okay, so we gave that a couple minutes to spin up. Here's results, you got your table. You can of course make a chart instead. Um, and so it's in a data frame now. Okay, so this notebook, the language here is Python uh, and uh, by default, it's going to have a magic command for Python right here. But if you wanted to write in a different one of these languages, you can combine any language of uh, uh, any one of these four in this notebook. So how do we do that? We say, give me a new code cell down here, and you're going to use one of the following what's called magic commands. So if you put this in the top of your cell, it's going to be Python. This is going to be Spark or Scala. This would be C Sharp, and this would be SQL. So if we wanted to write a SQL command, for example, just put that at the very top of your cell and you're off and running writing in SQL if you're a little more comfortable with that. So we've looked at accessing uh, data in our data lake. Over here in Workspace, uh, I created a database. This is a database pool, uh, SQL Server. Once again, I just called it MPP there, but just to remind you, this is a massively parallel processing uh, compute engine behind the scenes. And there's a table here. So you can do work here, new SQL script, top 100 rows. Um, uh, I don't want to make this video hours long, so let's keep going. Uh, we've looked at the Home tab, the Data tab. Now we're going into the Develop tab here. This is some of the scripts that we've already created. You'll see um, any notebooks are here, so you have different sections here. Uh, what else can you do? Click the plus. You can do some cool stuff. So let's do a data flow. Data flow is a visual uh, way to build things like ETL. For example, you set your source with all the different options. You can do a conditional split. You can join on something. You can then set up uh, what's called a sync. Um, uh, which is your destination. So you can do all this activity and save this as a data flow. Behind the scenes, this creates cool, I think it creates Scala code behind the scenes to actually run um, very efficiently. But this is your low code, no code uh, way to do uh, programming within Synapse. Let's go back to the plus Power BI report. What are you talking about, Kirby? Uh, yes, you can do Power, Power BI. BI reports, and let me show you what that looks like. I have already attached a Power BI uh, workspace. Um, I won't go into that all right now, but if we click Power BI datasets here and say new Power BI dataset, man, we are off and running. It says, okay, you're gonna pick your database here, and this is your SQL MPP database, and then say download PBIDS. I'm not gonna do it right now, but what that does is it opens up a Power BI desktop um, application. Power BI desktop is free. And it has all the connections to your Azure Synapse SQL pool so you can create reports. So really slick, integrated way of developing Power BI right within Synapse. What else do we have under the plus here? Spark job definition. I honestly haven't worked with that, but you can set that up. Um, so uh, now we're going to go down to orchestrate and talk about that feature next. Okay, over on the left, you see the integrate looks like a pipeline because this is where you create pipelines. This is data orchestration and transformation. Uh, this is just kind of a sample of the different activities. 
Uh, it kind of looks a little bit similar to SSIS, but you drag your uh, activities onto the canvas here, and then you set the parameters. This copy data here alone, you could have this activity alone in a pipeline, and it would have um, settings for where your source data was, sync is the destination, and then column mapping. You can run data flows, which are those uh, uh, ETL uh, processes that I showed earlier, allow you to do power query, power pivot, power BI type of transformations. You can run store procedures, Python code, um, pull out Databricks notebooks, uh, execute those. So this is um, this is uh, very similar to Azure Data Factory, but now it's. Uh, integrated with Synapse under the Integrate tab. Uh, after that, you've got uh, the monitor. This is where you would go monitor your pipeline runs and drill into details about each run. And then the final thing on the left, this little suitcase looking thing with a wrench, uh, that's where you uh, set up all your different link services, which are connections uh, to data sources uh, outside of Synapse, uh, Key Vault, et cetera. This is where you set up your Spark pools, your Apache uh, Spark pools as well, and then as well as where you set up your security. So high-level overview of Azure Synapse Analytics. It's a single pane of glass for big data analytics, reporting, MPP, massively parallel processing uh, database engine, as well as on-demand uh, SQL serverless so that you can do queries against flat files, parquet files, CSV files, um, and then as well as all the ETL integration, data orchestration uh, ability. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this.